right, guys, what's up? Welcome to the Serving It Up podcast. This is episode seven, and it's where I get to know individuals through the three pillars of eat good, look good, and live great. Now, today's guest is a full-time dragon slayer. She's, in 2015, the most followed female gamer on Twitch. She was named 30 Under 30 by Forbes in 2016. And then in 2017, she was the fourth most influential gamer in the world. Guinness World Records, Gamer Edition, named her the most followed female video game broadcaster on Twitch. She's the Twitch Streamer of the Year by Ninth Shorty Awards. She's the host of South by Southwest Gaming Awards. She is a fellow Canadian, which is the highlight out, out of all that. Honestly. And she is from Ontario. I would like to, you guys know her as, oh my God, it's Firefox. I call her Sonia. Welcome to the podcast. Yay, what, what an intro. <laughs> I had to breathe. For, I had to be like, <gasps> <laughs> oh my goodness. I, and you know, I definitely agree that I think the highlight out of all of that is that we're both Canadian. Are, which is incredible. So for, for everybody who doesn't know, you are from Sarnia. Yeah, originally from Sarnia. And it's funny because I usually say I'm just from Toronto because nobody, nobody knows where, where Sarnia is, the petrochemical production capital of Canada. No one knows, but. We saying like Mississauga. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, people would be like, huh? And I'd be like, okay. it's just the worst. It's, it's Toronto. Just, it's, it's Toronto. Toronto. It's Toronto. <laughs> Same thing. How are you? Good, good. I think all things considered, um, you know, being in LA now is kind of an interesting situation uh, with, with, you know, COVID and everything happening right now. But working from home has been good. I, nothing's really changed too much in my life. Hey, I was going to think, I was like, probably for you, like nothing's really changed in regards to quarantine or anything like that. Maybe like no, not going to events, but pretty much that's it, I think. Yeah, that's been, I, I realized that the last couple of years I've been doing a lot more events and doing a lot more hosting and traveling a lot more. Um, but in, in January especially was absolutely crazy. Um, I was back to back every week traveling to, to different uh, gaming events and I do a lot in the auto uh, automotive space. So I was going to some auto events, but once quarantine hit, uh, you know, mid-March, early March, I finally could take a breath and I didn't realize how tired I was. So it's almost been kind of a, you know, a, the silver lining learning that maybe it's nice to just take a little break and be indoors. So yeah. You brought up something in January. So I don't, I don't think you remember, but I think both of us, we, um, we actually were sick in January. Right. That's very was, sick. Yeah, it was really, really weird. Um, I remember because like we, we messaged on Instagram and you're like, hope you get better. I got sick too. I'm like, I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> dying, literally dying. And it lasted so long. It was like two weeks. Yes. And I think I've talked to people about it. They're like, you, you guys pretty much had COVID. Like, it felt like it. Yeah, it knocked me out. I was like, yeah. oh my goodness. But that was for everybody who's watching is how we sort of met. It was very interesting. <laughs> I, and, okay, that brings me to another thing, which I'm going to preface, which is, first thing is first is, I'm pretty embarrassed right now for my setup. My setup compared to- No. You, I'm like, I didn't realize this until I was setting up, and I'm like, this is going to be the most horrific, embarrassing setup ever. There's going to no, be- this is meme, good. There's going to be memes and, like, comparisons of, like- when you're broke and when you're super rich or like expectation versus reality. No, it's, it's the differences in real life. In, <laughs> it's the differences in, you know, I've got the gamer lighting. I've got like a, the gamer chair, but being a chef, you know, you've got, this is your playground. You've got the kitchen, True. right? True. It's very reflective of our personalities, I guess. <laughs> Not just that. It's like the camera, the audio, uh, the lighting, all of that. And I'm just like, <laughs> I know. I actually, as a side tangent, I, um, is that maybe this is a tangent in and of itself. I had a psychic energy reading over Zoom. And when I hopped on, he was like, first off, I've got to say, this is probably the most like done up professional <laughs> setup I've, I've seen anyone in yet. I'm like, oh no. I know. Right. Um, okay. Some second thing I have to preface is yeah, I am a Twitch virgin. Meaning that's fine. I've, I've never been on it. So the thing is this, I don't I didn't know anything about you whatsoever when you first when we first connected and even till I guess this week preparing for this podcast, I didn't know anything. 
I was just like, oh, it's this really cool girl from Sarnia that moved to LA. I was just in LA. You know, we're just going to connect. It's amazing. And like, yeah. she, she's into cars, she's into gaming. Cool. And then not until this week, and then I noticed it said 30 under 30. I'm like, what? Is it? And then I saw them. And I'm like, huh? I started doing other, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's me kind of looking at it too. I'm like, wait, 30 under 30? I'm like, huh? And then <laughs> I, I have this, a similar reaction to you. So don't okay. worry. Okay. So I just wanted to say that to everybody. So I don't want to know, I don't want the Fox family to get on my ass and then be like, <laughs> how dare you don't know who how, she is. How dare you? No, it's. It's good. And it's cool to see more people just like learning about the space too, because I mean, Twitch has been around for 2012, 2013. Um, But you know, after the Amazon acquisition in 2016, it kind of became a little bit more mainstream. And it's really cool to see more people kind of like having eyes on the space. Yeah. So it's just, it's just bigger opportunity to, I don't know, expand horizons, I guess. Absolutely. And I think we mentioned it before we started recording was the, one of the big things about my podcast that I'd love to do was to reach out to people and get to know a bunch of people through eat good, look good, live great food, healthy mm-hmm. food, lifestyle. So we're going to get right into it. I'm super excited because like I said, this is almost like the first time we get to meet in person, face yeah. to face. So I'm excited to learn about everything about you and all that you offer. Cool? Yay. All right. So first things first is we have this uh, British Gourmand. His name is... Um, brilliant savant he always says tell me what you eat and i'll tell you what you are so i asked oh. you to bring some sort of food or drink or what would you like to have while we're having this podcast and you suggested uh coffee right yes okay what yes you, you had a coffee i have coffee i got a cold brew mm. coffee uh, ooh, what's is it an m&m ooh, yeah we got we got our uh high class m&m mug um Amazing. Courtesy of Goodwill, shouts out. And uh, <laughs> the coffee okay. inside is actually, this is, the, I, this is a really weird timing. Okay. Because my, uh, a friend of mine, Jack Septic Guy, he's like another uh, gaming uh, YouTube personality. And he came out with a line of coffee called, it's, it's his brand, Top of the Morning. Okay. Uh, and it's, inc- this is the first cup I'm having. I just got a new, because I just moved. I just got a new coffee maker. I just got a coffee grinder, and this is the first cup I'm having of his new coffee. And sorry for the little plug, but like, <laughs> how satisfying is it? It's, it's really good. I'm really, I'm really happy with this. <laughs> like, you're the first guest that actually offered coffee. So really, I guess had food. Some of them had cocktails. So then this was my first chance to be able to have my friend's uh, coffee. So he hey. started a coffee subscription, Cold Brew Club. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, he's, him and his wife, they were the ones who started uh, Inkbox. Do you know Inkbox by chance? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know Inkbox. That's cool. Okay. Yeah, so they just started this, and it's like this giant bag of like cold brew. So I just put out in a bag, and then you mix it. So I'm like, cool, perfect. Game. I'm so sorry. I really have to pause because I, <laughs> after being a Canadian in LA, I, people give me so much shit for the way that I say bag. And hearing uh, you say bag oh and the God. same way as me, oh. I feel at home. This is great. Thank you so much. Hold on, hold on. How do you say it? And how, how do I say it? Uh, like, like bag, like grocery bag. Bag, right? Yes. That's well, not how, that's, apparently that's not the norm. It's so, very Canadian. Yeah, when I went to LA or when I went to New York, people were like, oh, you're so not, you're not American. What do you mean? Bag, bog. Uh, what else yeah. do we say that people are like, you're so Canadian? Uh, a and like, I know. I mean, bagel is definitely because I mean it's just a derivative of bag. So yeah, bagel. Sure. Um, that's honestly the top one. That's one that I haven't been able to. Not like I want to shake it, but but yeah. that I definitely get the most comments on. <laughs> <laughs> but amazing. that made me feel so great. But uh, cheers, cheers sure. to our friends' coffees. Absolutely, to our <laughs> friends' coffees. To our first little meeting. Hmm. But who knows. Who knows, maybe after this, I'm going to be, like, super motivated to start twitching and start streaming on Twitch. We'll I see. hope so. You should. Do some food content. That'd be great. Oh, I have no clue. I have no clue what to do on it. You can, t- you can tell me. I got you. All right. So let's get right into it. Let's talk eat good. Let's talk food. First things first, are you a foodie? Do you consider yourself a foodie? Uh, I, I, I want to have that title. Don't know if I can fully consider myself a foodie. 
when I travel, I love dipping into the local flavor and, you know, seeing what, what makes that city special and what makes that area special. But me, myself at home, I feel like I'm so, I'm so jam packed all the time (laughs) that I'm so, I, I don't have a lot of time to fully cook, but I try to eat very healthy. I do a lot of, I do a lot of veggies and fruits. I'm a big fruit person. Um, and I don't typically eat a lot of meat. I, I, I go for meat alternatives. Uh, maybe it's just being in LA for too long. I don't do, you know, milk. I'm now an almond milk. I (laughs) I know. And I didn't realize how much it really affected me until I've been drinking almond milk for, and you know, oh, and alternatives for four years now. Okay. And I was like, I got a coffee a couple weeks ago and I asked for oat milk and I was that person. And uh, they were like, I think they, they messed it up and they put whole milk. And I'm like, my body can handle this. I got that. It's whatever. It's no. Oh, oh. Yada, yada. <sighs> oh. <laughs> I was out for like a day and a half. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't know that it would really affect me this much. That I'm was, like, I can handle cheese, but I... It was really Firefox, wasn't it? <laughs> that was it, literally. <laughs> it was awful. But yeah, overall, I wish I could say I'm more of a foodie. Um, mm-hmm. And maybe that's why I, you know, partially is really drawn to following you because you're all food. I and try. it's given me a little inspiration. I, I try to be. Well, the thing I wanted to ask is, okay, so if you don't cook too much, mm-hmm. you, you probably then either order out or, or dine out more. Which one? Order out, take out or... Oh, I, I mean, with COVID times, it's a little more tough, but typically I would, I would try and eat out mm. just because it's okay. the, it's the experience, you know, it's being Plus there. You're in LA. And, you're in LA yeah. right? So LA is one of the best food scenes in regards to trends and different new things is what's like your favorite restaurant that you've like recently gone to, or one that you always like to go to after you've like gone to all your events and stuff. You're like, I'm back home. This, I have to go yeah. hit up my spot. Oh man. I have, I have some local places that I, I, love a lot. Um, I definitely go sushi wise. I love going, I mean, sugarfish is kind of a staple, but I do love going to, Jinya is kind of a chain, but they do have uh, Robata Jinya, which is kind of like their main is restaurant. Ramen? Uh, it's ramen, sushi. Uh, they do like everything. Um, okay. But yeah, the ambiance is super cool. You can kind of sit right up the bar and, and uh, you know, watch them make food. It's, it's really cool. I really like Robata Jinya. But um, yeah, there's there's so many good spots. I feel like I'm very spoiled for choice here, are and you, that's been good. Are you um, very much more into uh, the Asian cuisine or a d- Italian or anything? I, yeah, I feel like Asian cuisine is is something I always just sort of naturally gravitate to. Like if I'm if I'm like okay, well I have some time, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out for food. It's it's like an instant thing. I always look for like the best sushi spots. I look for the best ramen spots. I look for um, you know, I, I love Korean barbecue. Uh, I'm any, anything like that. What's your favorite Korean barbecue in, uh, in LA? Oh, so many. It's so good. I know there's, uh, is it, I don't, it's S-A-A-M. Som? 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 Yeah. They're very good. They're very, very good. But I also really love, is it Gemwa? Do you know Gemwa? Don't. You heard of them? I, 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 there's only one that I really, really like. And yeah. it, it's always next to, if you go to K-Town in LA, yeah. um, you know where Quarters is? I don't. Quarters is like the big one. Quarters oh, okay, okay. That like everybody goes to. It's yeah. good. That one's really good. But I like the one across from it. I can't remember off the top of my head what the name is, but like, uh, mm, Jesus. That's it. Like, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that, that, I go there and I'm just like, take me, take me, take me now. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Finish him. <laughs> uh, all right when we talk about that i want to talk something else is since you've moved to la has there been any food or restaurants that you miss from canada oh that's so tough well growing up in sarnia i feel like the the flavor uh <laughs> the the flavor choices and um you know, <laughs> restaurants are are a little <laughs> a little lacking but i i you know growing up in sarnia there's a place that not only did my family used to work at, I had some uncles that worked at this place. I think my mom worked there for a brief moment, but then uh, it was one of my first longstanding jobs when I was 16 or 17. Um, 
there's a, a pizza place that they make panzerottis yeah or calzones but they make they call them puffios it's such a sarnia like it's <laughs> it is such a sarnia thing but that pizza spot those it's such i i miss that a lot i miss puffios um sarnia specifically one thing that i would always do you know with friends or with my family we have the chip trucks we've got the bridge fries Ooh. right on the corner Ooh. of like a parking lot yep and- there and you have that sign that says fresh chips yes and it's right oh, on the river it's so beautiful vinegar girl? what's that girl? vinegar or a ketchup girl oh, you gotta do a bit of both i i do the salt i do the vinegar sometimes if i'm feeling real traditional i'll slap on that malt vinegar yeah. that's a dangerous game but yeah a little ketchup poutine gravy you, you gotta do it but it's one of those things that you don't realize what you got until it's gone. Mm. I feel like I would have had a lot more poutine being in Canada, but now that I'm gone, it's all that I want. There, so there has to be poutine in LA. There is. It's just harder to find. There's some there's a place that somebody sent me and I the name's eluding me and I wish I could bring it up, but they apparently are the masters of poutine around this area. Okay. And I have yet to try them and I wanna know if it holds up. Uh, we should I should we miss all things is set and like quarantine's all good. I'll, I'll, I'll come down and we'll go and we'll like eat yes. Canadian food in LA. <laughs> yes, two Canadians judging all the, <laughs> all the Canadian food in LA. Absolutely. All right, uh, next thing I want to talk about quickly is you, out of, from Food Wise and everything like that, you got to go to Food Beast. Yeah. You got to see Ellie. How was that? Like, how was, that, was that experience? Did they make you cook? I know, they, <laughs> I know you got to like be him for the day, but. Yeah. Oh, that was, that was such a cool, um, I, I've done a couple of things with Food Beast now, and they're such an incredible team, and they're so passionate about what they do, and yeah, me and Ellie kind of switched roles for a day, <laughs> where I led a Food Beast meeting, uh, I just took, I was in his shoes, basically, but we were doing, a, like, a ramen integration, and it was just such a fun day of, they had, like, a giant you know, ramen sword and like other ridiculous stuff. <laughs> but yeah, they're they're a fantastic team, and that was definitely one of my most favorite interactions with them. Uh, we also did a they have a whole tournament uh, where they have people on Twitch, and you you're paired with a an actual chef, not me. Okay. Um, and you you have a partner who's an actual chef, and then they have a kind of a competition to see like who cooks the most creative meal and everything. Um, and we just did that a couple maybe like a month or two ago. Um, and that was an absolute blast. So they're, they're, I love Food Beast because they're such a, not only just like a food, you know, creative company, but they are a very creative company in the way that they work with brands and the way that they do their content. They're so creative and just, they really, uh, yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> I think for them, it's, uh, they're not afraid to do something different. Mm-hmm. They're not afraid. That's like, it. The food Beast kitchen thing and like, yeah. It's like they're, they're, when they go on Twitch for their stuff, it's not, you know, your typical Iron Chef or that kind of stuff. It's not like your grocery games, but it's like legit. Like it's this like really crazy, unique kind of vibe. And it's very food beast. Um, yeah. All right. Next thing I wanted to talk about was Japan. We had this talk. We talked about this a bit. I was supposed to go in literally three weeks. I was supposed to go in three weeks. Me too. No. It's, it's heartbreaking. Three weeks? I was supposed to go in September. Me too. Where were you? Where are you going to go? Like, where were you staying? Um, so the, la- the, the first time I went, we, I did a little bit of Tokyo and a little bit of Kyoto, and it was 10 days, not nearly enough. Okay. And the last time, last year, I stayed um, Shinjuku area, and then I stayed two weeks in Kyoto. And I'm like, still not enough. So this time I was going to do two weeks, um, probably Shibuya area, and then two weeks in Kyoto. Yeah. I wish should have stayed. Uh, yeah. Oh, I wonder. I wonder if we would have been on, like, the same flight and, like, are you, like, mid-September? It was supposed to be, like, mid-September into October. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> how, does, <laughs> how do we keep doing this? This is, this is all quarantine's fault. Let's, it's all quarantine's fault, COVID but brought, yeah. COVID brought us together and then <laughs> tore us apart. I know. Um, uh, I think like overall, it, oh man, 
the last time that I went, I would say across all of the food that I've had in my entire life, this is a big, I would say a big platform to put this on, but the best food experience I've ever had in my entire life was actually the last time I went to Kyoto. I, was I yeah, I, I stayed at a random Airbnb. They had a, like a, a shittily drawn map of a couple X's and uh, of places that they would have recommended to eat. I found one that was cool. I tried to look it up on Yelp, like the typical North American person I am. It didn't exist okay. whatsoever. I went to go make a reservation. I had to walk over and like knock on the door and say, hey. And they're like, I'm sorry, we're full up tonight. There's literally only a bar that has four spots. And then they had one little room in the back that had a table for six people. That was it. I got to stop you real quick and say, that has all the signs of good things happening. Yes, it's definitely, it was definitely on the right path. And it got even better when I tried to make the reservation and she said it was full and we made a reservation for the next day. And she said, just so you know, I'm the only person that speaks English here and I don't work tomorrow. So just so you have a heads up. And I'm like, you know, I'm going in. It's whatever. I got Google. It's cool. Yeah. We had Google Translate. We made it work. I'm like, I've got a tiny little bit of Japanese under my belt and that's all. But they, the next day it was a full like 12 course situation of stuff that I had no idea what I was eating. And I, you know, even just trying to ask like, oh, like, what is this? Um, a lot. I very limited in Japanese. <laughs> so I, I just went in and it was, he kept telling me, you know, like, you coolie, you coolie, and I should like, tell me slow, like slowly eat slower and really enjoy it. And just being able to talk to him, see him create the meal in front of us. And just, I, you, you know, we, we eat so fast and we just want to just consume and just scorp down our meal. But being able to having somebody look at me who created this meal and say, eat it slower. Like it's enjoy this. So Japanese for them. It, it's when they, it's like, they're telling you like, here, this is me. Yes. It's, it's a part of him. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, eat it what slowly. Was it? Do you remember? Was it like sushi? Was it like yakitori's or was it like, what kind was it? It was kind of a mixed bag of everything. We had like a lot of different sashimi, uh, pieces of fit. I don't even know what half of it was. There was a lot of like fried stuff. What's that? Did you have a kaiseki or amasaki, which is like, like a tasting menu, but like everything, mm. was there like a tempura? Was there some sort of steamed thing? Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of a mix of everything. You had like the, you had a great meal. The full, the full thing. Ugh. That's like the most hierarchy of Japanese food. Like you can go. <sighs> and that, and that was it. And again, being in a place where there's, there's five spots here. And then one little room in the back. It's like out of someone's house in residential Kyoto. <laughs> oh. I'm so jealous. Unbelievable. I'm Unbelievable. So oh. That was pinnacle for me. <laughs> Amazing. And then besides that, then was, did you try any other kind of foods? Like what was another thing that like was like, oh my goodness, that was amazing. Oh. I, maybe this is a very American answer. I don't know, but <laughs> right beside uh, Shinjuku Station, there's an egg slut. And there's a, a bunch of egg sluts in, in LA and it's, it's a breakfast. I'm huge on breakfast. Love breakfast. Me too. And uh, what, one thing I noticed is a lot of breakfast places in Japan had spaghetti. It's, I don't know if you uh, noticed. Yeah, noodles and rice are very common. But like, it was like specifically marinara spaghetti. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it's weird for us. And like, but in Japan, nothing is weird for them. No, yeah, it's, it's full send on any menu options. <laughs> but, uh. Spaghetti at egg slut? But yeah, at egg slut, they had a, oh, no, no, definitely. I oh. wish they had spaghetti at egg slut. But no, they had a specific <laughs> breakfast burger or breakfast uh, sandwich that was only in Japan. Oh. And I'm like, I I gotta have it. I think it was like the regular egg slut sandwich, but it had a different patty and different sauce and stuff like that. And I'm like, I got, I gotta do it. It was fantastic. And that became like a regular occurrence. As soon as I would get out of Shinjuku station, pop over to egg slut real quick and then continue with my day. Damn, Calvin. Calvin's killing it. Uh, uh, it's interesting. Um, okay. Next thing, because when you talk about egg slut, it's actually funny. It brings me up because um, me and a couple friends, I, I partnered with them. We opened up a place in Toronto, in Kensington Market. Do you know Kensington Market? Yeah, very cool. Yeah, so we, it's called Egg Bay. 
So it's like ah. a version of it. It was very interesting because when our when uh, when my friends came and they're like, "Hey, Wallace, we need some help. What would you want to you know come and help launch this thing?" And they showed us this little thing, and I was like, "Hey, this is excellent." And they're like, "You know about it?" I'm like, "Yeah, of course." And then it was cool. And then like it was very interesting. So. Yeah, it reminds me. I love X Life. So do you good. do the do you do the coddled egg and everything? No, oh, so we only do the sandwiches. Only oh, okay, do, okay. Only sandwiches. Because then if you do the coddled egg thing, now you're that's, really X Life. That's just X Life. Yeah. yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go into something called in the weeds. Cool. So in the Ooh. weeds is a terminology for chefs in, res- in restaurants and service where we're in the shits. Mm-hmm. Where like orders are coming in, we're backed up. We're it's the most typical frantic time you'll see in a kitchen. And what that means for us is I'm just going to throw you some rapid fire questions and you're going to have to play and like try not to try, you know, and answer them as fast as you can. Yeah, let's do it. All, All right, right, hold on. Wait, well, let me get a little reload, quick reload. Ah, okay. Yep. All right. Dish you want to learn how to make. Oh man, that's tough. Uh, gyoza. Ooh, I can do that. I'll, we'll do that. Oh, I love I'll that. Um, celebrity chef or TV chef you want to meet. Oh man, it, for the meme, I would love to meet Guy Fieri. Um, Wolfgang Puck was up there, but we, we did a whole thing with him last year or a couple of years ago, and that was like top chef interaction for me. But for the memes, Guy Fieri. Okay, whose food would you want to eat? Oh man. I, uh, for the memes, Guy Fieri, serve me something greasy. <laughs> All right, next, then the next question is very easy then. What's your favorite Food Network show? Well. That's what I mean. <laughs> I didn't expect that. All right. <laughs> overcooked or Cooking Mama? Oh, overcooked. Oh overcooked for sure. It me out. It's very stressful. It breaks relationships and friendships. It's, it's like the Mario Party of our new age. Agreed. Oh. All right, cool. Let's talk now. Um, let's talk look good. Let's talk look good. Mm. So health, fitness, aesthetics, all that kind of stuff, fashion. And I think especially with gaming and social media creators and content creators and people who are in, I, we always call, I guess people call it, you know, the modern day celebrity life, right? Per se. Um, first off is being on screen. How, how did you get so comfortable being on screen? Oh man, I I don't want to recommend anybody do this, but if you go to my YouTube channel and sort by oldest, I watched. Them. Don't don't. I did it. <laughs> no, <laughs> my first I was, vlogs. I was like, that chair is just as bad as mine. Yes, yes. I am following Tanya's footsteps. Humble beginnings. I uh, I was so awful on camera. I started calling myself an idiot every like every other word. I I just you know. I was not comfortable because that wasn't my my zone <laughs> at all. I worked retail, um, just talking to people face to face, and I, I wasn't used to having to record myself or anything. But the more that I would do it, and the more that people would encourage me, being like, "Oh, I love that vlog! Like, why don't you talk about this? Like, this gaming thing is really cool. Why don't you talk about this?" And I just threw myself into it. And after streaming on Twitch and being for not forced to, but <laughs> streaming anywhere from you know four to ten hours a day six days a week sometimes you're constantly just talking to a camera interacting with usernames that you see like it's it's weird because it's it's not as a you know a face-to-face interaction you just are are you just kind of get that sense of being able to just talk as long as you can (laughs) and being able to just interact with people and and keep it going but it was never a, a thing that i initially thought I would get into or, or thought that I would develop, but the more that I just threw myself into Twitch and was streaming like ungodly punishing hours <laughs> on my body, it just sort of evolved, you know? Let's talk about that then, because I think a lot mm-hmm. of people don't, every sort of, every career has their, their flaws or their things that people don't see. And you just brought something up, which I don't think a lot of people might, might think about is you're like, you know, you put a lot of stuff on your body to just be streaming every day what do you like what do you want to what do you want to tell people about that you're like streaming is not easy I might just look like I'm sitting down but yeah it's it's very um it's it's more taxing than I think people would realize 
And I didn't really realize it when I, when I first started, I was streaming, like I said, I was streaming anywhere from, you know, five to 10 hours a day, six days a week. And afterwards I would take that Twitch clip or that Twitch VOD, um, the video, and I would edit it up to put it on YouTube. And I would record an additional video because I was doing two videos a day and it was nonstop in the lines of my personal life and work. They were so blurred because it was, I'm, I'm personally my work and it just, there was no separation. So it was 24 seven answering emails, doing everything, 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 and having to be on for people all the time, having to be high energy and, you know, something that people would actually want to watch is it does get very taxing. And I didn't realize it until, um, I just got so burnt. I got so burnt out and I realized that I wasn't enjoying it as much as I, I initially was. And I really had to kind of like take a step back and be like, how do I, how do I make this work better <laughs> for me and for people so that they have content that they enjoy and I'm enjoying the content, you know? Agreed. Agreed. That's actually something I was going to bring up later. So we'll get back to that. But mm-hmm. I think that's, is that why you started then getting into yoga and meditation or was that something that you found later on or? That was definitely a little bit later on. I started doing yoga back in high school and uh, into college, but it was it was just kind of like a more of the physicality of it, of yeah. just I just want to stay in shape. Yoga is going to kick my ass, whatever, whatever. It is, but tough. It, it's it's tough when you really get into it. But the last couple years, um, I would say probably the last three years with yoga and the last four years with meditation, I didn't realize how how closely the two were married you know, and how closely breath work and everything um, really goes into that and how good that is for your body. And I started, I enrolled, actually during quarantine, I I enrolled uh, in yoga teacher training so that I could really hold myself accountable for keeping on track with staying on yoga and learning more about the practice and learning more about what goes into it and why it's beneficial for our body and like what that does biochemically and what it does you know, what does breath work do and, and everything. And it's really deepened my personal practice and it's, I've been forever grateful for that. I had a, I had a friend, um, she did like, I think it was like 25,000 hours or 10,000 hours. Like you go to Bali for like a whole month and like yeah. you know everything about that yoga stuff and then you come back and become a trainer. And would you ever do yeah. something like that? Yeah, this is uh, kind, I mean, with COVID, it's, I mean, obviously not able to travel right now, but uh, we're doing, I think the standard is usually like a 200 hour teacher training, and then you can go like higher up, like 500 hour teacher training. But right now I'm doing the 200 hours and they do offer retreats where you go to Bali and you're there for two weeks and you do, that counts towards a certain amount of hours. And that's my dream. If I can just like you know, screw off to Bali for, for Bali trip for two weeks and like (laughs) just do yoga. (laughs) I'm, that's it. That's what I love. Would you be able, is that feasible? Can you like just turn off OMG, it's Firefox for like two weeks and like. Now, nowadays, ask me that two years ago or three years ago, four years ago. No, there's absolutely no way. But I feel like because I've kind of pivoted a lot of my content and I've pivoted a lot of the ways that I, I do what I do. Um, I could definitely make that work now. <laughs> that is awesome. That's, that's good to hear. It's good to hear. Yeah. Like a lot of people, especially those that work for themselves and have to do all these things, they don't know how to turn it off. Like you said, mm-hmm. you'd be able to be like, I can now. It's, it's like a good refreshing breath of fresh air. Mm-hmm. Um, next thing I want to talk about is now we're getting into yoga. We're getting all that stuff. Yoga gets, uh, we get into like butts. So rumor is you talk a lot about butts. <laughs> so, I'm trying to find trying to learn about you i'm like why does butts keep coming up i love, I'm like, huh? I love how this is like during the re- again for somebody who you know we, we've just followed each other on instagram for like a hot minute and somebody who knows like nothing about me it's really cool to see the pathway of what you've uncovered you're like okay forbes 30 under 30 and butts i'm really not putting the two together but like you know mm. But yeah, so like, they, people say you talk a lot about butts. <laughs> it, I feel like it definitely used to be more of a thing. Uh, it was just kind of a, a I don't even know how it's, it, I don't even know how it started. It was kind of like a stream thing of like booty touches or touching the butt or something. And it just evolved into like, now. That's something like you would say while you're playing the game or? I think people in the chat really made 
like booty touches or touching because it was kind of like a joke thing at the time i don't know maybe in like more culture and then we kind of adapted it but um yeah it, it kind of evolved and then people wanted to have like an emote where it's a finger so it's like you know you can uh. poke the butt i don't know but i feel like we've grown We've definitely grown, matured. evolved, matured a little bit. We still retain the the emote uh, for you know longevity's sake, but it's uh, for historical value. But we've we've evolved a little Amazing. since I feel. Um, something else I want to talk about is now we're talking about evolving. Your hair has evolved a lot. <laughs> it's gone from multiple <laughs> colors, right? Yeah. From blonde, pink, brown, brunette. Um, how do you decide your hair color? Do you, does your does your Fox family decide your hair color? Do you let them choose or help? Oh man. If I did, it would probably be a dangerous game. But I no, I'm I'm actually naturally blonde, like very very blonde. So okay. I I and then I had uh you know, brown hair for so long up until when I started doing content and then everybody just knew me as brunette. And then I was like, well, I kind of want to go back to my roots, like literally and I guess you know, metaphorically, and I bleached my hair entirely. I went back to what I what I know and what what I you know my natural color, and uh, it kind of just opened up that opportunity. I'm like, okay, I have pretty much white hair now. I'm like, I can kind of mess around. I can do whatever I want, and then that evolved into blue and purple and pink and I white and everything else in between. What's been your favorite color? Uh, when it was white, white, when I went to Japan last year, I, I was looking back on photos and I think I lightened it right before I went. And I had this purple shampoo that, that pulls out any of the brassiness. So it got even whiter. Oh, that was my shit. That's what I, I, I loved that. I had, I know exactly what you're talking about because I had that too. Yeah. I had, it was like last year I decided to dye my, my friend, she's a hairstylist. She was leaving my other friend's barber shop. It was her last day, and, and she's like the hair colorist. So I was like, okay, it's your last day here. Do whatever you want. I'll let you, yes. like, I'll just grow back anyway. So, and then, like, so she dyed it, but it didn't have enough time. So she said, you'll come back and finish it. I didn't know anything about hair. I literally, it was gold. I was Goku, like Super Saiyan. Yes. <laughs> it, it was, but I didn't expect it, and nobody expects it from me. So then I had this, like, Goku <laughs> Super Saiyan hair for yes. two weeks before I can come back. And then she changed it, and then it went to, like, silver. The people started calling me Quicksilver. Yeah. <laughs> the evolution. And then I put on the purple shampoo, and then it started turning purple. And then it got mm. blue. And then it got to a nice little grassy sort of side with my roots. And it started looking like a fox, like a, like a husky. That was my favorite. The husky look was my favorite. But Love it. can't do it anymore. Um, okay, um. let's talk next thing is... We gotta talk. We we gotta talk cars when we talk about you. Gaming is one thing, but cars is another thing. So yes, and specifically because there's something really about you that I think I really connect with is the GTR is my is that's my girl. Oh, uh, that's my girl. <laughs> and, well, literally, you yours is called baby girl. Yeah. Like the GTR is my talk. Oh. If you're talking about butts, the GTR <laughs> has one amazing one. It does. Uh, it does have a nice booty. It, I would. I will say so myself. All right. So, where did your love for cars come from? It's always it, similar to gaming. It's always kind of been ingrained in me. You know, when I was younger, my dad has always been a super into cars. He had like a '67 Corvette and like older Jaguars and stuff. And he would always take me go karting and, and stuff like that. And I remember, you know, specifically when I would wait for the bus, like early high school. Um, I was kind of out in the middle of the country and I would wait for the bus to come and all the cars that would drive up in front of me, before they would reach me, I would try and guess the make and model. And then I would get like internally really excited when I got it right. And then I just start, I started to get really good at it and it became a game that I would do all the time. But I, yeah, I've just always loved cars, the sense of freedom. I got my license as soon as I could. I got a car the second I could. And my first car was a Cavalier Z24. It was like the sporty Cavalier. Had a sunroof, put underglow on that bad boy, and wow. uh, that was it. Well, you're, just, that, you're that girl in Sardinia. I'm that girl. <laughs> With the Decepticon sticker on the back? Yeah, I'm that girl. Um, but yeah, it always evolved. And uh, have you seen, you know, Bandersnatch? Yeah. 
like a black mirror. You know how there's kind of like a glyph moment of like, what do I, if I, if I choose this, I kind of go on this way in my life. Or if I choose this, you know, gaming, it was cars and gaming. And I felt like <clears throat> gaming kind of, I, I chose the gaming glyph moment basically, but cars have always kind of been on an equal platform. And since I, you know, started doing uh, streaming and kind of evolved in that space and doing more content, it opened way more doors to have that freedom to do more vlogs and kind of explore other interests. And, you know, like I said earlier, when I got kind of burnt out of, I've been doing this for so long, I feel like I'm streaming eight hours a day, I'm getting kind of burnt to the ground. And it really, you know, once I kind of took a little bit of a break, it gave me an opportunity to be like, what do I really enjoy? And when I bought the GTR, I, you know, I started to go, even before the GTR, I was going to car meets. And then when I had the car, I felt like I was a little more part of the community <laughs> and I could really involve myself. And um, I was going to car meets pretty often. Uh, there's a local place called Race Service and they do cars and coffee on Wednesdays. They're incredible and awesome team. And it, it I just started doing more car, car content and loved it. <laughs> so it's kind of, it kind of had that evolve more, you know? Okay. So why the GTR? Look at it. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't need to ask. I know <laughs> that's like my car. I'm like, I don't, I don't need to ask, but I still want to know. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I, I, I've always been, I mean, I love, I've always loved like R32s and 33s, uh, 34s of course, but like I, it wasn't even honestly in my mind when I was car shopping because that wasn't like that's not my go to for car shopping. You got your muscle cars, right? You got your Corvettes and you had all that. Yeah. And I, I, I was even looking at uh, Porsche for a while. I wanted to get a, um, I, I wanted to get something that had like a, a sun or not a sunroof, but like, a, you know, I could put the top down. I'm in LA, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I took out the Boxster? Um, I, I, I took out a Boxster. I was looking at the GT3, um, which would, would have been absolutely insane. Um, but I, at the same time as I was doing these test drives, I put out a joke tweet that was like, at Audi, at Nissan, at Porsche, at everybody. I'm like, fight for my love in my wallet, like kind of a thing. I was joking. But Nissan actually hit me up and they slid in my DMs. So I love brands like that. Brands right? like that are the most innovative ones. I love them. Yeah. And they, they see, they see an opportunity. They see that, you know, and they, they work with influencers. So they let me borrow the GTR. It was like that, that sunset burnt orange, like that okay. hot orange. <laughs> and I they let me. The, um, the creme brulee top. Yeah. That, that's such a good, <laughs> that's such a good uh, comparison. But yeah, literally the creme brulee GTR, they let me borrow it for a week and they're like, yeah, just let me know what you, if you, if you like it or not, blah, blah, blah. And after a week, I'm like, I can't drive any other car. Like, this is it. And I, ha I, had, I had to do it. Oh, you're such a good car. So, I'm going to a moment here real quick. Just yeah. Like, but <laughs> that is, it. so for me, my love of the GTR came from, I, used, I really, really loved 350. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fair lady. That bubble butt. It was it. That Speaking was, of. But, so I'm. And then I saw the 375, and mm -hmm. then I, it's because of that that I saw the GTR. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, okay, sorry, 350, get away, get away. And it's always been my thing. So then if we talk about that, and we talk about Japan, with all that, Tokyo Drift. Uh, ah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is, in, uh, when you were in Tokyo, when you're in Shibuya, did you have that little, did you be like, you put that scene in your head? That, <laughs> I, I definitely, you know, being in the taxi, I definitely threw on the song internally in my head. But uh, okay. Every, if you have a GTR and you like cars, you there's and you just and Jeff, no way you did not on the, on the red light. You're just there, you're just like dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> the whole time. Oh my god! And there was actually in Japan, I got a I got an opportunity to go to. Um, I heard about the Daikoku car meet. Okay. And I, it's like this gigantic parking lot. It's legendary. It's known for having like crazy Japanese cars, like straight crazy GDM stuff. And at night, everyone has like neon lights and they play music. It's a whole like deep car scene thing. But the problem is it's, it's a parking lot that's in the middle of all these weird like intersections and there's no way to get to it unless you have a car. Um. And like, and Ubers, Ubers are like a, the equivalent of an uber black car 
like the, the higher tier is what default Uber is over there. So it's so expensive. So I'm like in Japan, I'm frantically texting all of my car friends being like, do you know literally anybody here? I need to go to this before I leave. And luckily there was someone who's like, oh yeah, I've got a friend. Uh, he, you, you know, like likes going to these car meets and stuff, but being able to, and then he, he brought me, which was incredible, but being able to go to the, the Daikoku car meet and then see, you know, I saw an American GTR there. Okay. Somebody, some guy was like straight out of Texas or something, and he had an American GTR there. And I was like, I'm <laughs> never gonna see this. He's the guy from Tokyo Drift. That was him. Wabaki. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was such a surreal experience to really get into the Japanese car culture. And, um, you know, even with the language barrier of, of my Japanese is extremely limited. But people were just excited that I was taking photos of their car and they would try and talk about their car and just get excited. And I had people yell at me. Some like older Japanese man came running at me. It was a YouTuber, YouTuber and like pointing at me. <laughs> so it was, it was fantastic. That's amazing. Honestly, when you're telling me that, I can only think of that scene in Tokyo Drift where they're first going into the car meet and you got those girls with the freaking like, ready, set, go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Pretty close. It's pretty close. <laughs> uh, cool. Um, okay, I wanted to get into now the reps and sets. So reps and sets, or for here, I'm going to call it gears. It's going to be rapid, rapid fire questions. Same thing. Cool? Yeah. All right, let's do it. So OG Pokemon, which one would you choose? Your start. Oh, man. Charizard. I'm a Charizard lady. Okay. Me too. So we're good. <laughs> Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, or N64? Ooh. I out of all of them across all platforms and 64 that's where my my bread and butter my home my heart that's where it all what was your game i it's when i think of n64 the first thing that comes to my head is glover because it's a game that no one really remembers but i played the shit out of which one what was glover it, you're this weird little glove guy and you're you're you walk on balls like these weird i don't know it's really hard to it's not going to make any sense whatsoever. Like, hold on. I'm trying to if follow. You, if you look at the art, I think you would, you would probably, it might jog something in the memory, but um, yeah, it, Glover's the first thing that came to my mind. All right. Um, your favorite GTR? Just like any, any of them? Any Skylines? Any Skylines. I, I do have a place in my heart for R34s. There's just something about the way that they're built, just aesthetically. There's, it just, it does something. Favorite color for your, for a GTR? Gotta do the, gotta do the Paul Walker blue. I love that. It looks so good. It just, looks so good. I like how you call it. It's the Paul Walker blue. Well, it's a very, you know, you, as soon as, yeah, TM. Sorry, I guess I should, <laughs> should mention that. But yeah, it's the, you, you know exactly what the color is as soon as you say that. All right, this is kind of weird. I, I wonder if it's going to be in true but not. But dream car, dream car. Ooh, fe feasible, feasible or unfeasible? Oh, oh. <laughs> I would, I would love a Countach, but there's no, there's no way that I, there's, you know, there. <laughs> it's a Countach. I mean, you're just like, well, it's, there's no way. There's, no, there's no way. <laughs> And I, I watched a whole, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, DeMarco. Oh, I wish I could remember his first name. He's a YouTuber who does car reviews and he talks about like, he deep dives into cars and he talks about the weird quirks and stuff that have to do with it. I watched an entire video he did on the Countach and the windows are awful. It's like not really drivable, like a, if you're a regular, but you know what I mean? It's not like a feasible car to have, but. but that would be the dream car. That would be it. Okay. Um, all right, this, these are gonna be fun. Now these are a little bit like would you rather's. Ooh. Would you rather have slow dial up internet and keep your GTR? Anything else? Anything else? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Keep going. All right. So, would you rather have slow dial up internet and keep your GTR, or Don't have fast this internet and lose Don't your? Do GTR? it to me. <laughs> oh man, that. Uh, I gotta. I gotta have the internet. I'm sorry, baby girl. <laughs> It's okay. I'll take care of her. I'll take yeah, you can you can adopt her. <laughs> I'll adopt her. No problem. All right. Pimp my ride or pimp my computer? Oh, pimp my ride. Gotta pimp my ride. Yeah. All right. I want uh, that TV in the trunk. 
Did you watch all of that? Yeah. Oh, you got to. And actually, uh, West Coast Customs did the entire wrap on the car. On yours? Yeah, they did the wrap. They did like all the tint. Um, they they truly they truly pimp my ride. <laughs> Sick. That is dope. That's cool. All right, we got to talk now. Let's talk about life because yours is so interesting. Yours is so different than most people, and at the same time, it's also a life that millions of people strive and want to achieve. Um, so with that though, Hugh and Spider Man with like great responsibility comes with great power <laughs> comes great responsibility. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you touched about it a little bit earlier, which was a typical day for you as, or in, any, in general, a content creator or a media or anybody in social, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. You're streaming, you do the streaming, then you do the editing. And you, ta you talked about something and I heard you talk about it before. And that really, really connected with me because I felt the same way, which was that burnout. That burnout mm -hmm. and not wanting to turn it on, turn it off. That line between working and not working when your your own brand per se or your yeah. company or whatever is you um for someone who's at your level what have you found that's been the most helpful the most helpful in that that i feel like i've learned is i think it comes down to two things one was more recent for me than the other but being able to set your own boundaries and set your schedule, which I'm, I'm going to eat my words because I'm awful at doing it, but <laughs> being able to, you know, set your boundaries, give yourself a hard cutoff day. If there's a day that you're like, I, I, I haven't, I've been working two weeks straight. I need to take a full day off and just like chill. Um, being able to respect your own boundaries so that other people will also respect your own boundaries, you know, so that if people aren't asking you to do stuff on days that you're off, like if you make it very clear that this is my time, I need this. And there's nothing wrong with that. Being able to, to set that constraint for your own sanity and for other people to respect that too is so important. And one thing, again, more newer than that revelation, but it definitely came through meditation and through yoga and through everything else is that to be able to listen to your body, because there's so many answers in your body for things that are going on, you just need to be inquisitive enough to question it or even taking the time to listen to it you know like if you're sometimes you don't even realize that you're getting burnt out but when you take a second to meditate and you're like oh, like I feel this I feel it or if you're unsure on you know some kind of brand deal or a business venture or something that you're putting your time into if you feel like you're constantly being drained by it maybe it's time to kind of reevaluate you know what you're what you're doing and how much energy you're putting into it and maybe you can do it differently or set different boundaries but yeah i think being able to kind of again respect your boundaries so that other people can other people can respect it and to listen to your body and i agree i think that's a big thing it's interesting because when you say that and when i heard and i hear your story about you know dealing with all that stuff it brings me to my it makes me think of mine of mm. my personal story too of that because you found it through yoga so for me, as a fitness competitor, I see it physically in my body, mm. um, where like I, I'll realize I'm burnt out when like I might be I hit my workout, you know, I got all my meals in, did all that stuff, but I look in the mirror and I'm like bloated or super watery or like just very your body's like it's all that cortisol and all that stress and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, that's I'm learning that. I'm I am the first person to tell anybody that I'm having the worst time figuring that balance out, that like turn it off thing especially because COVID has pushed me to really push out content. I've never mm -hmm. pushed out this much content before and it's forced me to. Um, and I'm learning, I'm definitely learning. So it's cool and really, really cool. And I want to say thanks to like, hear how you take care of that. Because a lot of people, you know, they see the end goal, but they don't see all that stuff that takes to get to there. Yeah, 100%. Um, what I want to talk to you about is, you said something about, you were always, um, you always overcommit. You still do that. <laughs> I feel like I'm the queen of overcommitting. I'm, I'm getting a lot better at it. Um, I just have a, I, I, maybe it's the Canadian in me, or I don't know. I have a problem. I, I don't want to disappoint people. Yeah. And I don't, I have a really, really hard time saying no. Agreed. And I've, I feel like I've gotten better at 
even just friends, like not being able to hang out. I'm COVID has definitely helped that situation, <laughs> but just, yeah, yeah. Just being able to, again, it comes with respecting your own boundaries of, I, I don't think I have the bandwidth for this and being honest with yourself and then being honest with the other person, you know, even friends, brand deals, anything like that. Like I'll have deals come in that maybe it's a way bigger commitment than I wanted. And I don't know if the pay is, is worth the, the energy or, or any, whatever the combination is. I, you know, just being able to be honest with brands and say that, like, I just, I really can't, I don't have the time mm. right now, or, you know, and with your friends too, just being like, I, I'm completely slammed. I hope you understand. And, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's an ongoing battle, but I feel like I've definitely gotten better. Got you. Um, what I want to talk about next is your move to LA. When was that moment when you're like, I'm going to LA? Because you went from LA and then you went to Portland mm -hmm. and then you're back in LA. Yeah. Yeah. So like, what was the, you know, where did the girl from Sarnia <laughs> exported to LA over there? <laughs> Truly exported. Um, no, at the time I was uh, involved in a relationship with somebody who was also a content creator and we were dating long distance for a long time. Um, and I was getting booked for events and getting booked for work in LA and at other gaming conventions. And it just made sense, you mm -hmm. know, it just made sense, especially, you know, with the, with the relationship, it just, we just wanted to be closer and, you know, it overall, it just made so much more sense to be in, in LA. And I, you know, I feel like I had a moment where I was like, F the city, I want to get out of here, and then you know, move to the Pacific Northwest. And then, after a certain amount of time, I was like, What did I do? <laughs> and uh, I missed rain, but not that much. And I, I came back, and <laughs> it's been it was definitely the decision to come back um, and have more opportunities. And because that's well, it's it's so expensive to live here, and it's definitely draining if you let it. Um, there is, there has been numerous times where just being in the area has definitely helped in terms of, Hey, we have this last minute shoot for this gaming thing. Um, we had somebody to like drop out or, Hey, you're, you're local. Like it's this weekend. Can you do it? And being able to have that freedom to be like, yep, jumping in, you know, it, it's, it's definitely been beneficial. I think that's like one of my biggest reasons why I, I had that moment. I, there's a moment where like, I wanted to move to LA for that same thing which yeah. is, you know, whether it's like anybody that like wants to do a, 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 some sort of content piece or like, hey, I'm doing a pop-up. We want to like do a course this weekend. And I'm like, yeah, I can't fly over there and like <laughs> a course and fly back. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. But I totally agree with you. Okay. And then when was the last time you came back to Canada? Oh, it's been years. It's probably been maybe two or three years. And I was actually supposed to come back because I missed, I, I always love coming back for Canada Day because I, I love Canada so much. And I, I'm very, I will come back for Canada today. That's the one thing I always make sure. I love coming back for Canada today. Do you um, Sarnia or? Yeah, I, I like to spend Canada day in Sarnia because it's just, you know, it's something I grew up with and it's celebrations that I've had as a kid and they have something in Canaterra Park and they have the fireworks on the river and I get my bridge fry. You know, it's, it's so close to home and it's so close to my heart, literally. And it's just, I... I love experiencing that, but I missed it last year and I was really heartbroken. So I was so excited to come back this year, but now the borders are closed. So figure this out. We'll, we'll go to Japan. Yeah. We'll go eat in LA. We'll do Canada. Stop in Canada. And then. <laughs> Perfect. Um, something else I wanted to talk about then is um, you, you talk about family, Fox, the Fox family. So you call it the Fox family. That's your community. That's, yeah. they they're a big group of people. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> really, how, We're a big fam. You are a big fam. And um, out of all those family, your Fox family and all that stuff, well, there's one more family member is Gonzo, your cat. Oh, my baby. Yeah. It's gorgeous. So, <laughs> you have a lot of really, really great things. You know that? You got a GTR. Oh. You got a cat. You got the family. I'm very, I feel very blessed. I feel very lucky. What kind of cat is he? Or her, sorry. No, he, yeah, he's, uh, he's just a, a tabby cat I actually got when he was six weeks old, um, like six to eight weeks old at a local shelter in Sarnia. And I've had him, he's 12 or 13 now. 
So he's like my ride or die. He's truly my 12 year old son. Like he, he's been around through so many moves, so many relationships, so many everything that he is. So gorgeous. So like, I love, like, so me, for me, I love your, your, your feeds, your feed on your, your gram and everything. Cause it's like, it'll be like cars, game, traveling, food, cat. And, so. <laughs> things that are great, but yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. and so was it hard to bring Gonzo over? Um, no, I, I, I just brought him over, cat carrier, drove over the bridge. <laughs> you, do you bring him to events ever? No, he's like, he's such a grumpy old man at this point that there's no, there's no way he could handle it. Sometimes I'll bring him on stream and I'll, you know, I'll hold him and everyone's like, oh, Gonzo. And then he just buries his head in my, in my elbow and he's like, he's not about it. He's not really a big ham. <laughs> okay. Um, next thing I want to talk about is for you, you're on this big pedestal of obviously brand partnerships and collaborations and brand deals. What's, what's been a, your favorite brand partnership that you ever had so far? Oh man. It's uh, immediately two came to my mind and it's, it's definitely between the two. I did a, uh, a branded video with uh, legendary where we filmed with the rock and we did a whole, I was, it was called reality quest. I was stuck in the rocks video game and it was in promotion of, uh, you know, the new Jumanji that was coming out. And I played this character where I was, you know, going through the, these video game levels and trying to defeat not only my own struggles, but also The Rock and his minions, <laughs> bald minions. But that was honestly, a, I, again, like another pinnacle point in my life where I never in my, what, if I could talk to 16-year-old Sonia and I, <laughs> and say, you're going to be filming with The Rock and you're going to be on, you know, standing face to face with this mountainous man. Um, I wouldn't have believed it in a thousand years. <laughs> and I think that was definitely a, de a huge highlight in my life <laughs> and in my career. <laughs> That's but, um, yeah. Is there a brand you want to work with? Oh, man. Nissan, hit me up. Give me that Nismo. Um, no, I, <laughs> I think... I've definitely, uh, man, I don't know. That's really tough. I kind of just go with, you know, what what's happening, I guess. Like in the car space, it I almost fall into and develop uh, into, I guess, brand relationships. I, I feel like I haven't like sought out too many brands, but one that's kind of came across that has been a really cool relationship is with Michelin, where they do a lot of experiences with um, with influencers where it's not just, you know, they brought us out to Goodwood in England, like the whole, um, you know, the whole auto fest out there. And we went to road Atlanta and we got to drive on the track before the Petit Le Mans and like crazy stuff. But it's also the food side of Michelin, um, you know, with the Michelin star restaurants and they, it was, it's a whole experience and being able to have that, um, and see, the, the the passion and the uh, excitement of not only the staff but everybody like everything that's put into Michelin as a brand has been really cool. So that's definitely been a dream partnership. Speaking about that, then where was the last Michelin star restaurant you went to? I think it was in it was in uh, where was it? It must have been in England, I think, when we did uh, when we did the um what's it called i just said it goodwood we we went out afterwards and there was a uh a michelin star restaurant that was down the street from our hotel and they i wish i could remember more about it i know it was fantastic it was definitely a couple of drinks deep um and <laughs> there's definitely some wine in there there's, there's a couple of glasses in there but yeah i think that was the last michelin star experience okay and because now you brought all that up you know what it reminds me of i feel yeah. like the next brand deal that will segue into our next thing we'll talk about is you should be in the next Fast and Furious. Sign me up. There's one, there's one photo on my Instagram and it's like of me in Azusa Canyon and I have the GTR in the back and there's all these canyons and I'm, we just started taking dumb photos and I was walking towards the camera and it looks like it's about to be a slow-mo shot where my car gets blown up and I'm like, what, you know, yeah. and I'm like, cast me in your action movies. Dwayne, Dwayne, just, just give him a message. Be like, homie. 
DJ, hit me up. Let me know. What are you gonna do? You gotta you gotta hit DJ, you gotta yeah. hit Nissan, and then you hit Michelin. Bam. Yeah. That's the perfect Venn diagram of me in an action movie. Agreed. There now, it is. Brings it into acting. So mm -hmm. aside from all the accolades you're doing, this screen online, you're actually on the big screen. You're also on the big screen. Yeah, a little bit. I'm dipping into it. You were on Mayfield's game. Yeah. You were on a reality quest that you were talking about, me and I. Oh, like, how did that happen? Were you, did you get casted for it or were you actively looking? It, it's a, a little bit of both. Initially, I wanted to get more into, I, I mean, I've always been into comedy. So, and being on camera and, and doing stuff like this, it really helped to have, you know, I went through UCB. I did a couple levels at UCB. Um, and I took, you know, comedy training, and then I went through uh, acting uh, classes, a couple different levels there. So I really wanted to kind of like curate my skill set in that. And, and through that, I just, um, and again, just meeting people through the industry and meeting people through uh, like the reality quest thing was a friend of a friend who worked at, you know, this agency, and they were looking for a gamer girl, basically. And they're like, Oh, you're the first person I thought of. So that's how that kind of evolved. And um, you know, with, with Mayfield's game, uh, kind of similar where they, again, just being involved with an agency and they're looking for someone who's, um, who had like hosting experience for something that was gaming related. And I kind of like checked the boxes, um, of that. So it's definitely something that I, I, I'm realizing more and more that I just love being a part of a production. Like I don't even have to be, you know, I don't, I, I'm not here to be a movie star, <laughs> but I, I do love being a part of a production. I do love seeing all the gears and pieces come together for a whole. It's so, it's so cool to be a part of that experience. So being able to have, you know, Mayfield's game and, uh, you know, other opportunities, I would, I'm just excited to hopefully have more of those once, you know, and we're able to. Was uh, Mayfield's game or reality, which one was your favorite one out of the two? Uh, both, I mean, uh, The Rock was obviously a, uh, <laughs> that's, that's definitely a highlight. But. As he, is he as big as he is in person? He, he is gigantic. He is definitely a mountainous man, but he's such a gentle soul. I, I The first thing he said to me, I saw him on set. They were actually still filming uh, Jumanji at the time, and I, we got him for like 40 minutes in between pickup shots for for that filming. We're like, this is it. You got like 30 minutes. And that's, and that's all you get with the rock. And I'm like, understandable. So I'm like getting mic'd up and I'm on the side and you know, they're, they're adjusting my mic and blah, blah, blah. I didn't even see him coming. And he walked right up and he's like, Hey, I'm Dwayne. Like, I want to introduce myself, like really excited for this. I was looking it over. It's, you know, it's cute. Now I'm really excited. Like, are you, are you, are you pumped? Are you ready? And just like went out of his way to make sure that I was comfortable and introduced himself and was very friendly and just made, we made like dumb inside jokes and like, really it's, it's so he's so humble and he's just such a badass and it, it was surreal <laughs> Amazing. um all right let's see what else i want to talk about then um okay let's get right into the yolo so yolo is the rapid quick fire for this one yeah. so acting or streaming oh acting i'll take acting yeah. yeah if you weren't a gamer actor race car driver what would be your career choice oh man I remember as a kid, I wanted to, I wanted to make fireworks, <laughs> but that was, maybe that's like a long forgotten career. We're a loop on that one. I have no clue where that came from. I threw myself at a loop. Um, man, I mean, I was getting into programming. Uh, initially, I studied coding in college so that I could develop video games. So I'd probably, I would probably be a video game developer. What kind of video game would you make? Um, I was working on a 2D side scroller for a while, but that was just kind of like a practice to get into things. But I would love to do some kind of like open world, you know, Elder Scrolls situation. Um, I think that would kind of be my jam. Cool. Um, if you could be a, any game character, who would you be? <sighs> who would I be? Oh man, I just, I'm coming off hot of playing. I just finished, uh, finished uh, Ghost of uh, Tsushima. Okay. And that was incredible. If I could be a, a, a Japanese samurai man from the from 13th century Japan, um, I I would be Jin from Ghost of Tsushima. Funny, because like I'm not surprised. <laughs> He's so cool. He's Japanese and like the game side, so that for me is like, oh, it makes total sense. I can see yeah, yeah. samurai and just take a big giant tuna and just. That's it. 
<laughs> That's my dream. Uh, cool. All right, Sanya. Now, the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to take you on to something called social hour. So we're going to mm -hmm. do a quick little digital deep dive. I'm going to share my, um, share my screen with you, and we're going to go and just talk about some of, the, some of, some of your socials. Cool? Oh, I'm scared. Yeah, let's go. All right. Don't worry. <laughs> You will it's, be it's just cars, cats, and games, so I'm curious. Oh, and spaghetti. And <laughs> we got spaghetti. some pasta. <laughs> the meal of champions. I wanted to bring this one because I guess <laughs> I sort of went deep, and you have a you have a quite a lot of food food photos. Do I really? That's shocking to me, yeah, honestly. Stop. I was like, oh, this was like when you started. You cooked. You actually cooked quite often. It would literally be like two food photos. And then a photo of you with your friends or like something. And then more food photos. Man, okay. Man, 2016 was popping for cooking, Sonia, I guess. I guess. And I also chose this one because like you're, you're drinking Behringer. Oh, yeah. Which was like, that's the wine that was on Top Chef, on Top Chef Canada. So was it really? Yeah. So that's why I only know this brand because of oh. Top Chef Canada. And I'm like, it's oh, a, you have yeah, it. It's always been a staple. I don't know why. I always go back to that wine. <laughs> it's oh. good. They're from Cali. You should go. Are they really from California? I mean, that doesn't surprise me because yeah. I'm blind, but yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, so I was just like, wow, like you cook. I just wanted to see like if you do remember this. Yeah, that's so funny. I, yes. Uh, my spaghetti sauce is definitely a staple in my cooking. Spaghetti sauce. What's that? What's in your spaghetti sauce? Uh, it's it's nothing crazy, honestly. Ground beef. You got some tomatoes, onion. Uh, we got basil, oregano. Got, yeah, the the staple, right? <laughs> so boring. Do you use are are you just because of this photo? But do you use powdered pre grated cheese, or are you more into the fresh one? Nowadays, definitely more fresh. Back then, ease of access. We got the powdered cheese. <laughs> All right, we'll go right next one. <laughs> how did you get brad Rowe? so for me i know, I know do you actually because of the fitness industry he goes to venice beach and like he's very big in like our fitness industry so when i saw that why why is there so many connections here that <laughs> That's so funny. I, so I was actually on the beach shooting something uh, completely just like for myself. It was for uh, Patreon and I was doing my own photo shoot. And then uh, when we were shooting, we happened to notice that some other guy, this jacked bodybuilder is also doing a photo shoot on the beach. I had no idea who he was at all, but okay. I, I just rolled up because we're both doing photo shoots and I was like, Hey, and we just started talking and I'm like, do you want to like grab a, a photo real quick? Cause I, I just thought it was funny and like awesome that we're, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just weird. I like talking to people. And then he like threw me up on his shoulder. And we got it. Like, yeah. Yeah. He, so he's like a pro bodybuilder. Yeah. Um, very clearly. He's always at gold. Um, but he also acts too. He acts and he also has like oh. a prep company. Uh, I don't know if he does that anymore, but I saw this one. I'm like, what? There's no way. Yeah. <laughs> the <my> connection. <laughs> Plus the whole Canada bikini. I was like, yeah. I feel like if I was in LA and I never knew you, like I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't telling you that I'm gonna see you or we're not gonna meet up. And I see some girl with like Canada thing, I'd be like, I'll just scream, Sonia, is that you? Yeah, that's it. Brown hair, Canada bikini, probably me. For sure. All right. <laughs> that's that's so good. good. Uh, this one. <laughs> yes. So. This is so Japan. I, I, for me, I've seen and I've heard about this place for the longest time. How was yeah. it? It's, it's, exactly, it's exactly how you imagine it. It's super crazy. It's very bustling. There's crepes on every corner. Um, you can get crepes literally everywhere. Um, it, <laughs> it's just so cool. There's so many like random shops with just like outrageous stuff. And you got to get the gigantic... You got it. You got to get this. <laughs> What's that? Did you finish it? Oh my God. No, we were with like, uh, actually show who I, I see. It says for show time. Yeah. Do you follow him? Yeah. I know show. I was there with him. No. Yes. So it was me, uh, my friend Brooklyn who, who knows show. And that was the, one of the first times I met him. We, we split, we split this. This is so interesting. Dude, yeah. the, the connections. Yeah, show. Uh, oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> we have some more stuff to talk about off this. But yeah, what a small world. Small world. Um, 
there's something else that I saw because you know Sean Wasabi. Oh yeah, yeah, he's a homie. Yeah, because I, I saw you had his thing. You had his um, his the music creator. Oh yeah, the little midi fighter thing. Yeah. Super cool. Uh, okay, next one. <laughs> For the meme. <laughs> For the meme. And then it was funny because like I saw this stuff like I I got it right away. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I, I feel like sometimes people, I, I put, do you get it? So that people would be like, wait, get what? Because I feel like upon first glance, people are like, I don't know, there's Guy Fieri in a burger, you're in a diner, but five guys, burgers and fries. Five guys is actually my go-to food spot. Like if for a fast casual burger joint, mm -hmm. five guys is always consistent. Five guys are in and out. Oh, five guys. Shake Shack over all of them. Okay. But I'm not an In-N-Out guy. Oh, man. In-N-Out is? In-N-Out is, is a West Coast version. Okay. Before everybody's going to, like, hop onto this. I know, I know. This is about to get dangerous. All right. But In-N-Out for me, when I first had In-N-Out, it reminded me of Burger King. Yeah, I can see it. It reminded me of Burger King. Don't get me wrong. It's a good place, but Shake Shack... Mm -hmm. over in and out for sure Oof. okay you're an in and out girl you i'm you, there is no sarnia in you any anymore you're full <laughs> west coast it's all exited i'm in and out <laughs> in my blood ah <gasps> and the question for here i wanted to ask is why is there five of them how did like <laughs> four like was did you print five cutouts of guy or did the restaurant have five cutouts of guy I would have been so happy if this restaurant had uh, cutouts of Guy Fieri. Um, I or I was going to order one or two of them for a bit. I remember I was getting them for, to do some bit. I wish I could remember what it was. But I'm like, I'm already here. Why don't I order, I don't know, 10 and just like see where that gets me. And <laughs> I, I, after I had them for a while, I'm like, what the hell am I going to do with 10 cardboard cutouts of Guy Fieri? And then it, I started giving them to friends. I started gifting them. Um, and then it came to me, just five guys, burgers and fries. And I went to a local uh, restaurant in Hollywood and I popped in and I was fully, I didn't ask them to like, hey, I'm going to take photos here, blah, blah, blah. I literally just like, I might order a burger and fry and brought in my Guy Fieri's and set up. <laughs> No shame. Oh, I love it. I freaking love it. Um, okay. Next one. You, you're, we uh, talked about it. So I was like, oh, that's really, really cool. So that was really interesting. And yeah. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I saw this photo and I was like, that, we have to talk about it. And we, I'm glad <laughs> we talked about it already. Um, cool. Yeah. And being, again, like being, I'm five foot, I'm, I'm, I'll say five foot three. I'm five foot three and I don't, you know, I'm not a very large human being, but I, look even tinier <laughs> next to this like a hulking human being amazing oh my god uh this one <laughs> yeah first of all i miss that shirt it's like i would rather be listening to the grammy award winning 1990 hit smooth by santana and it like goes on and on and on it's so dumb but i miss that shirt a lot <laughs> to remember it was <laughs> incredible <laughs> so what, what was this about Oh man, we were doing videos uh, with React, with YouTubers React, and at the time, one of the big things was uh, bread face vlogs, and it was a woman who would basically just smush her face into bread and do, like, that was it. I don't know if it was like bread ASMR or what was happening, but they wanted us to, to try it ourselves and um, see, see what we thought about putting our face in bread. <laughs> and how did it go? Honestly, okay, some of them, listen, if it's like a ciabatta bread, it's a little tough. I mean, the inside was great, but you got the edges. But if you can get a nice, smooth, like long, like that Subway roll there, that long Subway sandwich situation, it's kind of nice. It feels kind of nice. Kind of weird, but it's kind of soft. Okay, because I was like, what is this? Yeah, have you had that experience? Have you put your face in bread? I have. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what would you think? <laughs> in dough, in bread dough. 
Oh, not the fully cooked. It's a specific time I remember I made this big giant batch of bread dough and then it was in this uh, bus bin. We put um, saran wrap on top or cling, cling film, whatever everybody wants to call it. And then it, it risen, right? It, the yeast mm -hmm. let it rise and it became this giant pillow. And I, just, I was just like, because one of my favorite feelings is dough. Like, yeah. Okay, if I see dough, I'll poke at it. Like I have this urge to just like, Ah. It was this puffy thing. And I'm just like, oh, because I didn't expect it to rise that much. And I'm just like, Tuck. and then I was just like, oh, this is so, oh, it was it's soft. It's, it's so soft. It's good to know that, like, again, in my experience, the fully baked bread is, is equally as soft. But now I know even in dough form, it's still a good pillow. Dough form is amazing. <laughs> Love it. All right, I think we have one last one. Mm -hmm. And this was your IGTVs. Oh yeah. Your IGTVs and something about was, you actually, you're very much in every single social media thing in regards to you're on YouTube, you're on Twitch, you're on all that kind of stuff. Um, and I just wanted, this was just to bring it up to show people, it's like, you are on everywhere. You're everywhere and you hustle. You hustle <laughs> and just to make sure people know that like, all the stuff that you have and everything that you've got in, you put your blood, sweat, equity, body, everything into it. And that's all, that's the only reason I brought that one up. But. Thank you though. No, I definitely try. And I think that's important too, just in content creation. A lot of people are like, I'm going to be a Twitch streamer. And they're very much like Twitch, foot, Twitch, Twitch. But I found through everything, it's been so important to diversify and have, you know, I, I try and keep Twitter updated. I'm wearing that same sweater right now. Um, I, try, I try and keep Twitter updated. I try and, uh, you know, keep Instagram and doing vlogs on there and Twitch and I do Patreon and then everything, you know, and it's, it's like, you know, if you, if you really dedicated yourself to Vine and you were making, you know, all of your income on Vine and now Vine is gone. It's like, that's something there's no, there's not a lot of stability in, in a job like this. So being able to kind of have plenty of pots that you can pull from and penny, plenty of, you know, options and, and, you know, creative outlets, it's all the better as if you can hand, if you can have a good schedule, listen to your body <laughs> and create boundaries, it's definitely important to diversify. So for you, you're, you're definitely that kind of person where, you know, you'll put your energy into what's maybe making the most ROI, but then you're, you're going out and you're putting everything out on everything else to make sure you have those channels. Yeah, I definitely try to stay diversified. I, I, I think I, I go with what I'm enjoying most. I don't, I haven't done YouTube in a hot minute because it got kind of punishing, but I, but then I found that I enjoyed doing video content on IGTV way more anyway. So it's just kind of, it's just adapting. It's adapting with what you enjoy, what everybody else is enjoying, what the industry is doing, like being able to have that adaptability and just jump on things that you enjoy and follow that path is like very important. Yeah. Well, Sonia, like honestly, I know you're super busy. You've probably got to switch. You got to stream right after this. But I know you're on the big screen. I know you're on your Twitch. I know you're on all these things. But now the Serving It Up podcast is your stage, your screen. Um, uh, you share. Let anybody know what's up, what's new, what they, what you want to sell. Tell them. It's all yours. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, I stream on Twitch as often as I can. Um, definitely pop by there. We play a lot of different games. Uh, we sometimes we play bop it or just talk and drink coffee. We're kind of all over the place. Um, I can't talk too much about it now, but I'm going to have a podcast of myself coming out later on, uh, which is really exciting. And other than that, I'm just at OMG, it's Firefox and everything else, car content, gaming content, some yoga stuff, wellness, um, kind of all over the place. So yeah, come hang out. Content. Yeah. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Teach me how to make gyoza, please. That's absolutely no problem. We'll talk. We'll talk about that after. But, yeah. All right, guys. So thank you guys for watching. This was Serving It Up Podcast Episode 7 with the girl Sonia. Go check her out. And until then, have a good one. <laughs>